pop force node is designed to apply velocity to the particles over and over and over again. So what we end up with are particles that get faster and faster and faster. What we can do here is either specify a force in a specific direction, or we can use a noise. So with the force that's going in a particular direction, if I say negative nine in Y, that's pretty much the same effect as gravity. We have a force, it's going negative nine, it's getting faster and faster and faster. What we can also do is turn on this use of expressions. And here, if we go with the drop down menu, we have a few pre built setups you can explore to see how this generally works. So, as an example, if we let's say randomize the magnitude right here, we have these variables right here, this force that's internally understood by the node. So, you don't need to say at force, you don't need to specify a particular attribute. It's going to recognize that force is referring to the internal name that's used right here in this parameter. So in other words, if you want to use vex in this example, you don't need to actually specify the attribute force. You just need to refer to the internal name used by this particular parameter. Now the vex expression up here only exists for this top section. It's not going to affect parameters down here. We actually have a separate use of expressions down here for the curl noise. And as we can now see, we've randomized this force intensity for every single particle. We can also turn on this guide right here. That's going to essentially create this guide showing you what the velocity looks like. And if you want to specify a group of particles to affect, then we can check the group on right here. But let's go ahead and just change the amplitude, you'll notice that these velocity vectors are now changing. So we're adding in this curl noise. I'll go ahead and take our force down to zero for the time being. Now we're left with just the curl noise. And if I change the swirl size, I generally like having a swirl size that I can actually see. So you turn on the guide, you change the swirl size here until it's a scale that you can recognize. And then from here we can add detail with the roughness, or perhaps we can add a bit more turbulence to this as well. But basically put, if you play with these parameters right here, you'll then be left with the noise that moves the particles around like this. If you'd like a more detailed explanation on what every single parameter does, including the bindings tab or the input tab or what the specific noise parameters mean, then check out cgforge.com if you go to the Node Bible, I have everything listed out there. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.